بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري بس لي امري واحذر عقبه من لساني يفقهوا قولي um, we're going to do this khutba today while also recording myself um, and i will be looking back and forth while i'm doing this live inshallah um, so today i wanted to talk about um, tribulations tribulations big and small um, last week we talked about what was called the divine trust fall the divine trust fall is, to, for those who were not here last week, is the idea of completely surrendering to Allah. A trust fall is basically when someone's standing behind you and you can't see them and you have to fall backwards and trust that they are going to catch you. Um, and so we have to do that on the daily, several times a day with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where we kind of have to let go of things. We have to recognize that we're not in control and that we kind of let ourselves fall and trust that the divine will catch us, inshallah. So this is going to be really important as we talk about tribulations. So one thing is that people can look at tribulations in multiple different ways and depending on how you were raised or you know how you were taught the conception of God, um, and how you were taught to look at God and how God responds to us, you can see tribulations in one of two ways. Either it's a punishment from God, or it is an opportunity for growth. Uh, you, like, a, a, like a, a tribulation that can bring you closer to God. So how do we know if we have a punishment, if we're receiving a punishment from Allah, or if we are being given an opportunity? The reality is, it's always an opportunity. The reality is that we get to decide if this tribulation becomes a, a test uh, of, a, or a punishment. If this tribulation becomes a gift or a punishment, we get to decide that. How? So, and how do we know if, you know, the end result was that it was, a, you know, a gift or a punishment? We know it was a punishment if we ended up after the tribulation, more distant from Allah, more resentful of other people, more bitter, um, and more oppressive to ourselves and others. That's how you know it was, that you didn't take the opportunity to grow. And it could have been a punishment, but you can still turn it around. You can still, like, if, if it was taken as a punishment by your choices of how to look at it and how to respond to it, you can still turn it around. So it's not too late. So the way you know that it was a, a gift is if you have grown and become wiser and closer to Allah as a result of it. So how do we even begin to even see our tribulations as an opportunity? Because a, tri a tribulation is de defined as a hardship. Tribulation is something that is that happens to us that we just don't want to happen to us. There's big ones and there's small ones, right? Um, and I'm going to start by, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go into like a step-by-step step for this. So step one is accept how you feel about it, whether it's a big tribulation or a small one. Accept the feelings that come with it. So sometimes Allah will send us something that we just don't want to happen. And we, in our sincerity, might want to be the kinds of people who just are like, Alhamdulillah, I'm at peace with the divine decree. It's all okay. That's really, really hard to achieve. That's, and I don't think Allah expects that out of us. And even the Rasul, our, our Prophet, he cried in grief. He, he experienced grief. He experienced all the emotions related to tribulations, grief and anger, um, pain, like he he really experienced all those emotions and it's it's a sign for us to learn because we're we're trying to achieve our most ideal selves as worshipers of Allah and when that happens we have to also recognize that we're human beings and if we try to shut down our feelings uh, thinking that this is how we are ideal then we forget that we're human beings the fact of the matter is that the angels are the ones who are not experiencing the full spectrum of emotions like we are, but we're human beings. Allah has created us to feel these things, right? So, 
Anger is important, grief is important. Painful feelings are part of the process of the tribulation. So don't skip out on them, don't resist them, don't try to pretend they're not there, don't ignore them. Because in the words of Rumi, who was not just a poet but also a scholar, he writes a poem called The Guest House, which I always share with people, I think is a very important poem, in which he describes our emotions as guests that come to, uh, come to us. And he says at the end of the poem, welcome them all. Welcome even if a great sadness comes in and sweeps you of all of, it, all of your furniture. Welcome them all because each of them is offering you a gift from beyond or a lesson from beyond, beyond being Allah. So what kind of, what kind of things could we possibly be learning from our emotions? What we're learning is all of the things about us that gets in the way of us being getting closer to Allah. There's always going to be obstacles that get in our way. Allah says in the Quran, we are closer to mankind than his jugular vein. The jugular vein being here is one of the major arteries that connect you, um, that, that transport blood throughout your body, right? And if Allah is that close to us, why are we so distant? Why does he feel so distant? It's not because he's distant, it's because we're distant. And why are we distant? Well, there's all these veils between us and Allah that are created by our own egos, that are created by us not knowing ourselves. And that's what Rasulullah says in hadith, the one who knows himself knows Allah. So when you feel something in relation to your tribulation, it, may be, it might be anger, it might be frustration, it might be grief or sadness or anxiety or worry. All of these things are telling you something about you. And what you, what flaws you have that are barriers between you and divine intimacy. So start by feeling all the feelings, accepting that you feel a certain way. And obviously, when I say feel your feelings, that doesn't mean that the way you react to your feelings are always acceptable. So this is a really important point with that, which is if you're angry, and you know, I'm going to accept my feelings of anger, that doesn't mean that it excuses you reacting in a way that is inappropriate, that is violent, that is um, aggressive, that is disrespectful, right? Or, you know, if you're feeling grief, it doesn't mean now it's appropriate for you to go and self-soothe in a way that Allah said that is not appropriate for you to self-soothe. So accept the emotion, feel it, and like kind of sit with it and express it in a way that you're responding and not reacting to, which is a very important distinction. Um, because when we're reacting, we're not in control. When we're responding, we're receiving, reflecting, and then having a response to it. Step two is give yourself what you need. So giving yourself what you need is, is much easier said than done. So sometimes we don't even know what we need. We're not used to asking ourselves the question, like, what do I need right now in this moment of tribulation? Like, what do I really need? And of course, there's going to be a list of things. You might be like, I need money. I just need a lot of money. <laughs> and you don't have access to that. Or I need a therapist, but therapists are expensive. Or I need, you know, I need this person to just be better towards me. <laughs> Anytime that you want something that you feel like your needs are outside of your control, you can fall into something that is uh, a lot of therapists call learned helplessness. Learned helplessness is when you begin to kind of see yourself as helpless and your idea of being able to be in control of your life at all is completely out the window and it's not the type of surrender that comes like oh i'm not in control Allah's in control it's more like well this person is the reason why i did this and i can't do that because of this this situation and like if you're constantly living in that state you're never going to get better you're going to stay where you are because Allah also will always send you the exact things that you need. So you're never going to be completely in deficit and, and unable to do anything. Allah will always empower us with something, with resources, and they are the right ones. But you have to pay attention to the resources around you. So, for example, what do I need? I really need a vacation from work. I really need to just not go to work. But you have no choice. Let's say it's completely out of your control. You have to go to work. You don't have any vacation time or you can't afford to take vacation time. Then what is the alternative? Ask yourself, what is in my control? Well, 
I could maybe start to establish better work-life boundaries with my coworkers, with my boss, or stop taking on things that maybe are not within my job scope, because this is a lot of people do this, for example, like they'll start taking on extra tasks that they don't even have to do, they're doing other people's work. Um, things like that, but this is all related to awareness. Or I'm gonna start going for a walk every day for 20 minutes because if I'm sitting down at work all day at a computer, if you have a desk job, then you need to go out and, and go for a walk. You know, it's very good for your body. And I'm gonna um, reference something from a, um, a therapist named Phil Stutz, and uh, there is a Netflix documentary about him. Um, he's, uh, he's, got, he's gained traction as a therapist because he was, um, he was like a, an, a famous actor's uh, therapist, and this actor decided to do do a documentary on him. And he said, whenever you feel yourself in a place where you're just like low or you're unmotivated or you can't do something, focus on your life force. Your life force. What is your life force? He describes it as like a triangle. He draws a triangle like this. And have you seen the food pyramid before? So it's like the food pyramid. And at the bottom of the pyramid, he said, and the life force is your relationship to your body. Are you eating enough? Are you drinking enough? Are you eating the right things for your body? Um, are you getting enough physical activity? Are you sleeping? Or are you at least trying to sleep? Are you making sure that you're not, you know, scrolling through your phone an hour before bed because that actually keeps you awake? Things like that. Then the second part of the life force is your relationship with others. So how are your relationships with other people? With your friends, do you have a support system of people who can be there for you during tribulations that you will inevitably experience? And then the, the one he says at the top, I have another one at, on top of that, being, uh, being Muslim, but the one he says at the top is a relationship with yourself. How are you viewing yourself? Do you hold yourself into a regard of self-acceptance? Um, it doesn't have to be one end of the extreme where you're like, I'm so, I'm the best, I am flawless. But it's also, there's other extremes where we start getting really down on ourselves and feeling um, excessive shame about things that are kind of crippling. And then at the very top is what I say is your relationship to God. And that's the most important, of course. What is your opinion of Allah? Like when you're in this tribulation, if you really feel like, well, I can't do anything, I'm helpless, no one can help me, everything sucks. Well, then what does that say about your opinion of Allah? If you have no hope in his mercy, if you have no hope in his power to change your situation. So, um, so give yourself what you need. And, and if you're not sure what it is, ask Allah, Allah, show me what's in my control and what I can do differently and what I can do to offer myself what I need. Maybe I just need to sleep, go to bed earlier. <laughs> Maybe I just need to um, spend less time with this person who is very exhausting for me. Maybe I just need to take it one day at a time. Maybe I just need to, whatever. Whatever works for you and you know nourishes you and helps you feel better, give yourself what you need. Step three, renew the state that you just witnessed something where you witnessed Allah's power over you. A tribulation is a moment to be like, oh, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar means God is greater. Greater than what? Greater than you. Greater than the, any of the things that are happening around you. Any, greater than any power that has overcome you. It was a witnessing of Allah's Jalal. So Allah has two major aspects of him. His Jalal and his Jamal. His Jamal is his beauty. His Jalal is his majesty. Like, sometimes Allah brings us closer through His beauty, through merciful, beautiful things happening in our lives, through the birth of a child, through a beautiful sunset, through um, just uh, through, through nourishing foods. Like, these are all signs of Allah's jamal and mercy. But sometimes Allah brings us closer through His jalal, His majesty. Sometimes He will put us in a situation we get into a car accident um, or even the passing away of a loved one or, you know, 
um, fighting with someone who we really love. Why does he do all these things? We don't, I don't know the exact reasons why. Only you can know why in your own personal uh, life, in your own personal reflection um, with Allah as he guides you and navigates you through life through different experiences. Because each of these experiences are signs pointing, pointing to Allah. So renew that state that you just witnessed God's power over you. Because, and then you're also witnessing that God exercised this power over you and he believed that it was good for you. He believed that it was good for you and that he knows that which you do not know. Like he says in the Quran multiple times, I know that which you do not know. Um, and then also in part of step three of like renew the this, this state in which you've witnessed God, um, humble yourself and know that your desires for, for yourself are not necessarily the best thing for you given your limited knowledge as a finite being in the realm of the infinite one. Step four, ask Allah to heal you during this time. And he'll allow him, ask Allah to allow you to process all of this so that you can come out better, wiser, kinder, softer, and closer to him. Because if we don't ask Allah, <laughs> we, can't, we can't do it on our own, right? All of this at the end of the day is about asking Allah um, to, to open doors for us. Because at the end of the day, we're ultimately not in control. Um... And pray that, that this tribulation that you experience doesn't leave you as a bitter person or an ungrateful person. Because a lot of people, when we come in contact with someone who just seems very rude or someone who seems uh, who's very unjust or someone who is um, hateful or short-tempered, oftentimes these people, or I would say every time, it's because these people have experienced so much tribulation. Um, but they didn't know how to process that pain. They didn't know better. And so it's really important that when we experience tribulation, and the, on, the, on the flip side, by the way, have you ever met someone, an older person who's very wise and very kind and like, you know, is, is an extremely beautiful person and has so much insight to share about life? And you realize why? It's because they experience a lot of tribulation in their lives. So you will see that tribulation doesn't necessarily make you a bad person or a good person. It's, it can result in either way, but you get to choose that, right? So pray that this tribulation makes you a better and more righteous person, inshallah. And the final step in all of this, step five, is to remember death. Death is a major way that our tradition reminds us to put things into perspective. The Prophet ﷺ and his companions used to go and visit graves. So if you're experiencing a major tribulation or a minor tribulation, or you feel like there's too many minor tribulations that are really getting under your skin and influencing the way that you, that you deal with people and the world and influencing how like your mood is always really bad because you're constantly being shook by even the small little tribulations, go visit the graves. Any grave. It doesn't have to be necessarily a Muslim grave. And sit there. And like recognize that there are these bodies under the ground of people who lived full lives and go look at the dates see how some people were really young when they died and some people were really old when they died some people were very wealthy you can tell from the tombstone who was wealthy and who wasn't but at the end of the day it doesn't matter they all ended up in the same place and another thing that the companions used to do is, and I mentioned this last week, was that they would actually dig their own graves and lay in them. Just, just lay there to kind of shake them awake. And this is not, by the way, our society, our Western society sees death as this very scary horror film kind of thing. That's not the view in Islam. It's not necessarily morose or macabre. It's, it's um, an opportunity to kind of like sober and center yourself. Because this dunya is like a drug. <laughs> and this dunya is also like a prison sometimes. 
sometimes like a prison, sometimes it's like a drug where you you just get like totally into it and you're elated by the the, the beauty of it. And other times it's like the worst thing ever and you want to like you want to exit and check out, right? But the grave reminds you on both ends of the spectrum to come back to the center. Like, like it's gonna end. Thank God, some people might say, thank God it's gonna end. Some people might say, oh, I don't want it to end, but you know what? I need to remember that it's going to end. And it doesn't, and it's not going to end where like nothing else is gonna happen, right? What is death for Muslims? It is the time in which we are being reunited with our Lord. But before we're fully reunited with our Lord and bliss, we're going to be read an account of everything that we did. So we have our books that are written about everything that we do, every action and every word that we perform is being written down. And after we die, our books, so that we have the, the books of all of our good deeds and the books of all of our bad deeds, and those are put on a scale and they're weighed. And Allah will even read to us the things in our books so remembering all of that is an opportunity to be like, oh, okay. And, and the Rasul said that the people are asleep. That the people are asleep. Asleep because we're getting, this is like a, a dream almost. This whole thing that we're living in is, is kind of a dream. It's not real with a capital R the way Allah is the real with a capital R that this is just all of this, every single thing in this room, every single thing, my, my, my clothing, my hands, right? Your, your face, your children, your home are just signs pointing back to Allah. And that's why they say that the awliya of Allah, the, the, the saints of Allah, everything like they, they look at, they're in bliss because everything they look at reminds them of God. The, the grotesque and the ugly and the beauty, all of it reminds them of God. I mean, Allah make us of those people. And another good exercise if you can't necessarily visit a grave and you need to center yourself right on the spot is kind of look at your own hands. And, and maybe even see maybe the veins in, in your hands and in your arms. Uh, I invite people who are sitting here to look at their hands. Notice, and I invite people who are watching this recording, look at your own hands. Notice how the lines in your hands, like the warmth of your hands, this is all life kind of pulsating through you right now. Go ahead. Mm. That life is pulsating through you right in this moment. And once you die, it will turn into dust. There will be no pulse and there will be decay. And this is not, again, to scare anybody. It's to remind us that this is all temporary, that our bodies are temporary and that we honor our bodies, but remember that our bodies are not going to take us to the end of it all, right? Our souls are infinite. And though that was what will be reunited with our Lord, inshallah. So in light of these five steps that I shared, no in your tribulation that there is not a single task that's impossible for Allah and not just impossible there's no difficult task for Allah not a leaf falls without my knowing it speaking from the Quran that every leaf that falls off of tree, there's bajillions of trees on earth Allah knows about every single tree that falls you know read ayat al-kursi ayat al-kursi is a very important ayah within the, the chapter of the cow that kind of describes God's majesty and power and ability completely. Read Ayat al Kursi and reflect on that. Like that Allah is the King of Kings. That Allah can, in a, in a snap, can make anything happen. So know that there's nothing impossible for Him. If He wanted to change your tribulation, no matter how impossible it feels, He can. And He's not. He's not changing it, maybe. Like, he could have protected you from the thing. He could have prevented that thing from happening. And that's going to take, that's going to be really difficult to sit with because there are things that will happen to you that you just, I've had it happen to me so many times, things where I'm like, I can't understand why this is possibly good for me. 
And that doesn't mean those things should have happened to you or someone should have oppressed you or, you know, no. Bad things shouldn't have happened to you, but they do because ultimately they're opportunities for growth. And in doing so, I have personally can speak from my personal experience that if I didn't have those tribulations, when, you, when I really reflect on it, if I didn't have the tribulations that happened in my life, I wouldn't have grown in the way that I did now. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't even like that woman, that version of me who didn't experience any of those tribulations. So I trust, I trust. And my dua that I always make to Allah is in, in the midst of a tribulation is, oh Allah, please help me with this tribulation, get rid of this tribulation, right? It's not like, oh, you have to just accept and love every single, accept, yes, accept in the sense of like, I accept Allah's decree, um, even if I don't like Allah's decree, like that's that happens. But um, kind of pray, you, it doesn't mean you don't pray for your tribulation to go away, right? We, we don't want to be in constant suffering and tribulation. So you pray for it to go away, you ask for Allah, and, and then you let go of kind of the rest from there. It's like, I'm going to pray that this goes away, and I'm going to try and be pleased with the divine decree. And if I'm not, and it's very hard to be, ask Allah to make you pleased with his divine decree. Help, say to Allah, Allah, you know so much that I don't. I can't understand possibly the reason why this is happening to me. Please help me understand. Please help me understand it. Um, and don't underestimate the power of your dua. Be in constant communication with Allah, constantly. Don't, don't think that the only way you can talk to Allah is in Arabic or during when you're doing salah in Arabic. It doesn't, you just, just talk to him. <laughs> just sit and have conversation. If you feel crazy doing that, write, like send a voice, like um, do a voice recording to yourself, talking to God, like, hey God, it's me. Um, <laughs> you know? Or I, I'll sit there with my hands like this and I'll make my dua. And then I'll sit at my um, my prayer rug, and I might feel overwhelmed or whatever, and I'm like, I'll start muttering to myself to God, <laughs> or to my in my head, you know. If you feel like there's other people living with you and they might think you're crazy if you're speaking out loud, just think about it in your head, because Allah can hear even what's inside of your heart, right? And just say, Allah, I'm having a really hard time. I don't know what I'm supposed to learn from this. I know that you're all powerful and you can totally change this, and you're choosing not to change it. What do you want me to learn from it? Help me learn it so that I can accept it, move on and grow so that this tribulation doesn't happen again. Which, side note, our tribulations, Allah sends them to us so that we can learn and get closer to Him. And if we don't learn the lesson, the first tribulation, He's gonna give us the same tribulation over and over again in different, in different shades of that color until we have figured out the lesson. So the faster you decide and, and get on, on board with trying to look inward and learn and see what is in your ability to change, the easier life will get for you because these tribulations will have to keep repeating themselves over and over, right? Your capacity for tribulation will expand as you get closer to Allah, as those veils start to come down little by little. And ultimately, what we're trying to achieve when we are taking down each veil one by one is that uh, like in the Quran, it says, which means, and the, the saints of Allah, the friends of Allah, awliya, the wali, awliya is the, the plural form, uh, wali is the singular form. Wali means friend of God, which is also, we, we call them the saints. Um, he says, they do not fear and they do not grieve. And this is attainable. It's a long game, but it's attainable, and that should be our hope, and that should be our direction of going. Like, and and when I say that, there's, they don't uh, grieve or or get angry because uh, get fearful. The Prophet ﷺ definitely felt grief, right? And he was obviously a friend of Allah, right? He was the the highest of stations. But it means that even if, because the Prophet ﷺ said in the Hadith, the eyes cry, but the heart is at ease. So even when you are in grief, like your heart is still like, okay, this is temporary. Like I'm, it's gonna be okay, you know. And may Allah make us uh, of His uh, saints, uh, of His friends, and may Allah bless us with an understanding of our tribulations, so that they can be opportunities for us to grow. 
May Allah bring us closer to him through his Jamal and not so much with his, through his Jalal. But then when we do have tribulations, that Allah guides us and brings us the supports that we need and the medicine that we need to get through it. And that it makes us stronger, better, wiser, and closer to him. Amen.